YouTube. Today we're checking out something called Battletech 101, the Great Houses of the Inner Sphere. I don't know nothing about it. I can't give you a good intro, so we're gonna just jump straight into it. If I don't know and you don't know, that means we're on an adventure together. So, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below to feed the algorithm quads, and let's get it. You have no choice. What the hell did I just say? <laughs> Battletech 101. A basic manual for new mech wars warriors. Today's lesson, the great houses. Oh, don't tell me I'm gonna be reading this whole Both time. Oh thank god. Warriors to the inner sphere. Hi. You can keep whatever money you find so long as you live to payday. Nice. For our first lesson, the great houses. Alright. Slide, please. So the great houses are the six or for people who can actually calculate projection. Alright, let's take a look at what ones they got. Hold up. Free Worlds League, cringe. Federate Sons, cringe. Capellan, cringe. Draconis sounds like it fucks. Sounds like it conquers some shit. I don't know about that one, but I'll fuck with that. These sounds like they got sticks up their asses. You feel that? No, for this one for real? Lyran, they got like a fist? A mechanic fist? Mmm, I feel like y'all sticklers. Oh, actually, no, the Federate would be sticklers. And then y'all y'all would be like the, the normies. That's what I'm feeling right now. I'm just guessing. I'm just now guessing. On an appreciable strategic scale, the four peer states, one remnant, and one hermit kingdom that make up the inner sphere. No, it's not a perfect sphere. Yes, there are things outside of it. Oh. Today we're talking about these assholes. Oh. These are the great houses of the inner sphere, and they're all very different in varying ways, but are mostly the same in that they are all occasionally not very nice to each other. They also possess vast arsenals of planet-killing weapons, and on special occasion will trundle them out for public display. I mean, honestly, if I respect you it. know why these people are fighting over such vast territory and why they're so committed to erasing portions of their collective industrial it's kill or be history killed? and civilization, well, it's complicated. Oh. My best take on it is a two-parter, and most people find that a bit much. So let this serve as a basic introduction to your career in the world of mech warriors. Okay. And a primer on who's most likely to kill you. When you inevitably Do you know what else you can be? A primer in the chat. Just double check, hit that subscribe button, double check if you have a Prime, a Twitch Prime available. For those of you guys currently watching on YouTube, go over to my Twitch channel, Alicia X Life, hit the subscribe button, and just check if there's a little box you can check off called Use Prime Sub. <laughs> you can subscribe for free to my YouTube my Twitch channel. <laughs> just double check that, you know what I'm saying? Alright. <laughs> Fuck up. But firstly, a disclaimer. Yep. I am biased. As a mercenary plying his trade in the inner sphere, I find concepts such as warfighting ideology largely a position of what you can cover up from the general public. Okay. Mainly because Damn. at the end of the day in the inner sphere, so he's shady. it's about you and yours. Mm -hmm. And smoking craters tell no tales. And smoking crack don't tell no tales either, bitch, because you be wiling out. <laughs> they make a hell of an auto cannon. <laughs> but to better illustrate my point, yeah. let's just dive in. All right. This map is from 3067. Maps oh. from after that are somewhat messed up for a number of reasons. And on an unrelated note, let's just brush this radioactive ash off here, and there we go. 3067. Don't mind the flickering on the screen. I'm told it's mostly harmless. Okay, mostly, mostly. harmless. Okay, damn. Let's begin with the great houses themselves. I'll be moving clockwise as we go for those of you who understand time, and left hand feed for people who understand timing. All right, Draconis is already think they're pretty Welcome badass. To the wacky, weird world of the Draconis Combine. Welcome to a pervasive class system and home to the galaxy's own homegrown, no bullshit, sword wielding, authoritarian samurai ruling class. Oh, sick! Oh yes, <laughs> this place is literally built off pre-space flight Terran shogunate era Japan. That's dope. It's a monolithic all-encompassing bureaucratic machine run on war and conquest that thinks optimal Christmas dinner is, by tradition, Carnage? fried chicken. Oh. They're a fun collection of ideas. 
I mean, that is actually a tradition in Japan, though. Like, KFC, you have to pre-order before Christmas Day because it's, like, it's actually, like, what they eat on Christmas Day. That's a weird thing for him to mention, though. <laughs> That's like... <laughs> That's <what I> was... <laughs> Behold, oh, fuck. <laughs> this is their throne room. Take that in. This isn't just for show. This is their military. These are their uniforms. <laughs> These are their men. Hold on. Great. Sorry, one second, one second. Is... <laughs> if I had to wear this in public, I'd be depressed. <laughs> you are getting no hose with that drip. Ain't no way. Look at this hat. Look at this goofy hat. What is that? What are those? <laughs> what kind of raggedy ass helmet is this? Oh, hell no. <laughs> are there uniforms? These are their mechs. Oh, their mechs are they sick. They fight like this all the time. Yes, those swords are very real and do brutal work. All right, so back to the guy in the chair. It is frequently a guy in charge of this. So this guy is called the coordinator. The oh, coordinator. He runs the place. Nice. There's very little distinction between the coordinator as a person and the Draconis Combine as a whole. Oh. When people refer to the dragon in reference to Curita as a house or a nation, it's interchangeable between the two entities. And no, the Draconis Combine doesn't celebrate the godhood of rulership with divine mandate. However, the coordinator's word carries essentially the same weight within their sphere of influence. Oh! So oh, shit! That's like classic, like, I don't know if you guys, I don't, like, know too much about, like, feudal Japan. When it comes to, like, uh, in Egypt, like in ancient Egypt, pharaohs were seen kind of the same way, where their word was basically the word of God. But it's like they themselves were seen as kind of like a demigod, right? My so, like, their decision-making was kind of, like, ultimate. tends to bury its enemies deep, headless, and by the million. They have no issues with troubleshooting in government, as trouble should be shot in the Draconis Combine. <laughs> Trouble shooting with a different meaning right there. That's crazy. Guys, <laughs> it's that they believe in a manifest destiny, mm -hmm. which involves House Curita controlling everything. The Draconis Combine started as an agreement between two worlds, which was then fed war and conquest through House Curita's leadership. Curita has had total control since the beginning. Aside mm -hmm. from that one cadet branch, that one time in the family who was wiped out long ago. As far as how this thing runs, well, the five pillars represent the Draconis Combine. The Pillar of Gold is the government. The Pillar of Steel is the military. Hey. The Pillar of Teak is the people. The Pillar of Ivory is religion, philosophy, Zen, and all that crap. And then I can't believe they bring out the fried chicken for that. <laughs> I can't believe they bring out the fried chicken for their philosophies. Shit, that's my philosophy too, though. I felt that. <laughs> You open up a KFC bucket, that's my, that's my religion? Fuck. <laughs> then there's Jade, the economy. These five <laughs> pillars of state philosophy are represented in the ministries of state. Fuck your God. Chicken's been there for me longer. <laughs> Organized through them. I'm a piece of for shit. Instance, <laughs> the pillar of steel encompasses the ministry of war. Oh, that would make sense. The department of yeah. indoctrination. Oh, I'm sorry. What? The substitution. The assimilation. I was with you for Ministry of War, and then the Department of Indoctrination, I was like, huh? Wait, is that, huh? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Come again, bitch? <laughs> of the Grand Inquisitor, the Admiralty, the Physician Staff of the Dragon, and various minor... Never guess Theodore his meds. <laughs> Speaking nice. of authorities, Draconis Combine bureaucracy tends to be impenetrable to outsiders, impossible to reason with, and largely maintains the status quo. <laughs> You can't sit with us, bitch. <laughs> One, we don't fuck with you. Two, your social econ socioeconomic class is too low. Stay within your lane, ho. That's their energy. I can get it. They're giving. They're giving. They're giving elitist. <laughs> yes, they're giving. <laughs> they're giving bitch made. With a little bit of, oh, world domination? Oh. <laughs> Actual decisions are typically made by people with significant military rank in the form of military governors appointed to oversee civilian authorities. Got you. When in doubt, the decision maker is typically the one with the sword. And if you want to see that sword up close and real fast, you only need to fail to take its bearer seriously 
or merely disrespect their presence. Disrespect also, your surroundings. Dirt to Mercy thing for a while. Oh. Not my favorite government to work with. Then again, they rarely need mercenaries ever because the constant fighting and insanity of the samurai class means they're pretty much ready to throw down whenever. If they lack a cause, they'll find one quick. <laughs> The leaders of the Draconis military are all- Listen, I don't got even a reason to fuck you up, but I still want to, bitch. That's enough motivation for me. All right? Oh, you looked at my wife funny? Oh, you looked at my wife funny? Oh, that's enough conflict for me, bitch. That's enough for me, dog. Let <laughs> me just square it up for no reason. <laughs> and peerless warlords equally at home in local shogunal politics or on the battlefields oh, wow. of their neighbors. The Draconis Combine is the state that war built. Maintained by Bushido, psychotic warriors, and a shitload of weapons. Yeah. Finding Kirito forces in your backyard is frequently the precursor to speaking Japanese in your near future, whether you want to or not. Oh, okay. Yep. Takeovers are kind of not lit. Oh, damn. Explosions. Oh, that's the federal. Re yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say the federal. Federal. Next door okay. is ruled by House Davion. Better right the so -called good kid of the successor houses. The noble one. The one that likes auto cannons a lot. That's these guys. Technically, the state is the Federated Sons, and they're another fun monarchy. House Davion is descended from English and French nobility, operating as constitutionally bound monarchs, and has been. They probably got some lit ass breakfast teas out there. I'm going to be real with you. That might be enough of a reason for me to join them. <laughs> I enjoy me a nice tea. Ooh. Since and they ever, probably get tea breaks. Oh. Trying to reinforce their position as champions of liberty and personal freedom at every annoying turn. Because of this, most people think House Davion, and by extension, the Federated Sons are self-righteous assholes. Yeah, that's fair. They are not wrong. <laughs> Mostly. But see, the story is a bit funny on that. You know, Originally, Apple. the Federated Sons was a federation. In time, the founding polities chose delegates to form a high council who would, among themselves, elect a president to lead them. Oh, we democracy. But democracy. The, the Davion <laughs> family were all about having a monarchy, so they pushed the presidency into that, and since then, the Davion family has ruled. <laughs> which is They said y'all voted, but we stay in. <laughs> Actually, that's a fucking dub. <laughs> that's actually so sick. Good for them. Like, wait a second, you thought we were going to leave after you voted me in? No, my whole bloodline staying, dog. Listen, we already put up a brand new shoe rack. I got a coffee maker just for this place. You think they going to get... If y'all buy a new Keurig, I'm going to have problems. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> Sometimes I think about these videos and like you'll get like these really cool breakdowns and summaries from the video that I'm watching that I just come over here and translate it into ghetto talk and just hood speak and a little thuggery up in there. I don't know, dog. <laughs> a little ratchet. <laughs> Mostly good for the Federated Sons and has worked out for the most part. Mm -hmm. However, Davions being Davions, one had to rule them all. So there was an early Davion Civil War. The five marches had to decide for themselves who would be the first prince, and sharing was, apparently, not a serious consideration at any point. Sharing was not In caring, the if you will. the first early Davion civil war, Alexander Davion went on to pass moral legislation. Motherfucker, you got a snarl built into your face. Ain't no way. This motherfucker's snarling. In a painting. <laughs> Ain't no way, dog. <laughs> He said, listen, I'm talking like a nasty bitch. Hold up. <laughs> like, chill. <laughs> ...than any of his predecessors because he had total military support. Turns out you can make people vote how you want with a bayonet. However, <laughs> the story doesn't get any worse, really, for some time at least. To their credit, House Davion was not a despot. They encourage then and still champion free speech, individual liberties, and personal freedom. Okay. But in the end, it is a monarchy. Considering the mostly beneficial ruling arrangement, that just feels like it up. feels like it's supposed to be. Oh yeah, we're totally all about the freedom and shit. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. Debt me up. Also, uh, it's an illusion of freedom. It's still a monarchy, but you know what? Uh, we'll let you feel like you got it. Yeah, no, don't worry about it. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Father knows best, state. 
which has many times but not always been justified in its actions. <laughs> Father Knows Best Day is actually a good such, way to put it, yeah. It is seen as one of the more stable houses on account of broad public support. Hmm. I will admit this, though they can be That's a goofy ass logo. <laughs> what is <laughs> miserably righteous and annoying. They're frequently not evil, just oh. smug. And yes, that is just as bad. <laughs> the armed forces of the Federated Sons have historically been one of the most professional militaries in the inner sphere, originally formed from peacekeepers and always kept as modern as state industries could allow. Okay. These guys even developed the predecessors to the Warhammer on their own dime in the earliest years of Battle Max. Even when they're wrong, they're almost right. Oh! Davion may not pay you well, but they won't bury you for no reason. Mostly. Wait, what the fuck? That's actually so cool. <laughs> what? All right, this music seems very daunting. <laughs> Next door Dictatorship? are these guys. I don't like them as much for a number of reasons. Okay. The Capellan Confederation is the youngest kid on the block as successor states go. Okay. It's a socialistic police state that has almost but not always been under the control of one family, House Liao. The head of the state is the chancellor, who is... A lot of these shits got them shits running in the family. It feels like they'd be a lot of family dramas happening. <laughs> I feel like we have a reoccurring theme of even when it's a democracy, we still got one family ruling. <laughs> like, are we good? <laughs> What's happening around here? <laughs> one family gets into power and they don't let go. Holy hell. Yes, in the Capellan Confederation, one nod away from making you disappear. Oh. To say that it is a police state Hold on. is not an... Disappear. Nice. Someone vanished. Someone vanished. <laughs> Act of hyperbole. I don't know who, but somebody. Substantiated fact. However, it wasn't always so. What started as a collection of states uniting for common defense and well-being. Oh, ho! states uniting seems like the United States. Mm. Sorry, I'm Canadian, so that's just funny to me. We grew over <laughs> hundreds of years through successive generations of philosophy and leadership from one house into an autocratic state with a centrally controlled economy. All right. Some would say this is a functional dictatorship, but dictators tend toward having some sort of functional agenda or understanding of strategic power. But in truth, there's actually three forces that run this place, Damn. at least in theory. They are the Chancellor, the Perfectorate, and the House of Scions. The Chancellor is the CIC of the Armed Forces, Special Forces, and the face of the state in matters of foreign policy. The Chancellor can also make decrees and legislative changes at will. It's a powerful position, to say the least. Aye. It's nearly always been a lifetime appointment for House Liao. The Perfectorate is the body of state regional entities and greater nobility. The House of Scions isn't, mostly. Needless to say, the Chancellor seems to get his or her way more often than not. But the other two governmental branches will act to frustrate or block particular agendas. What's interesting about the Capellan Confederation is that its citizens, or rather I should say resident aliens born there, are not citizens. Okay. Not yet, anyways. In fact, in the Confederation, citizenship must be earned. And the state is the sole measure of that esteem. Children are legally, in every way, words of the state under limited provisional supervision granted by the government to their parents. You must be worthy to be considered a citizen of the state. Mm, yes. Are you worthy? Other assigned legal guardians. At age 15, each child is thoroughly examined by the government to see if they have a proven <laughs> commitment to the state. Those who are deemed worthy gain citizenship. That's actually so lame. Those who are, okay, not fair. are given a grace period for a second evaluation. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, by fair, I mean like, at least <laughs> at least they consistent. Shit, I don't know, dog. This is terrible. <laughs> but failure to measure up as a citizen for any reason results in becoming a non-citizen, which are frequently referred to as state servitors. Servitors? By the succession wars, this non-citizen class had become an enormous part of the population. A population that, I must state, had no rights and was legally state property. This was reversed in 3052 when Sun Tzu Liao became chancellor and abolished servitor slavery. Not all Capellan chancellors are assholes. Most, though, well. I mean, that's... 
that <laughs> Jesus Christ. Imagine going through the government exam, failing it twice, and then becoming basically a slave because you're just seen as property, and then finally being liberated. Like, holy shit. And, like, just looking around at other people and being like, fuck, we were all the same for real, for real. I grew up with that mofucker over there. Damn. The record speaks for itself. The military, the Confederation Armed Forces have traditionally been the underdog, but have never shied away from a fight. They frequently are pushed into doing far too much with far too little, and on top of it, have honestly, to I don't fuck with this faction. Political and military meddling of a chancellor who may or may not understand the difference between entertainment and war. The fact that Capellan State think, has not been conquered. I think there has to be a clear distinction between those two. And if you ain't got that in you, you gotta move on, buddy. <laughs> speaks volumes oh. to the abilities of the CCAF, who have demonstrated battlefield insanity as a doctrine for nearly eight centuries. The Capellan economy is centrally planned and is designed on the principle that sufficient planning can overcome any hardship. This has produced mixed results. The Confederation. Uh, yeah, because that's not how economies work. If we keep planning for our economy to stay stable, it must do so. Yeah, of course it's gonna have mixed results. That's not how it works at all. <laughs> Shit can depreciate at any moment. Hello? These motherfuckers are stupid. <laughs> There's gonna be people who are like super into this faction. I get that. But your faction sucks. <laughs> There'll be people mad at me. <laughs> what at what cost? <laughs> They're gonna be like, shut up, I love this faction. I'm like, shut up, you wouldn't even have passed that military test at 15. You would have failed it twice, bitch. You would have been property for 80 years. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> even I wanna talk about you, child. Sit down. <laughs> you ain't even gonna be somebody like that. <laughs> Free World's League. Next door is right. the Free World's League. Okay. I don't say House Merrick because, well, it's complicated. Damn. Also, their history is isn't terrible up. as some make it out to be. Yes, the greatest threat to Merrick is Merrick, but glory to Merrick. But it was. <laughs> if you replace that shit. <laughs> With like any, <laughs> with any mofucker who's like fucking with the god emperor for real. <laughs> Does this not sound like some weird shit they would say though? <laughs> like, <laughs> <Glory to laughs> god damn. <laughs> but it wasn't always so. The Free World's League was actually formed before the Terran hegemony. Born out of the early Terran Alliance's colonial struggles and then collapse as an early power. Your homeworld falling apart in early colonization was, well, somewhat on the That's catastrophic cool. end of things. So nations which weathered that catastrophe learned self-reliance. The Free World's League was originally an agreement between three existing nations. Oh. The Merrick Republic, the Regulan Principality, and the Federation of Oriente. Boo! Amazingly enough. Boo! <laughs> Boo! I'm sorry. It's called Merrick Merrick and Federation of Oriente, bitch! <laughs> be Mer- There's two Merricks outvoting you. Just become a Merrick. Glory to Merrick. Death by Merrick. Voodoo by Merrick. Pussy by Merrick. Pussy by Merrick, okay? We own Merrick only out here. What you mean, stupids? The founders of the League <laughs> owe most of their success to a guy named George Humphreys, who was Humphreys. the negotiator between the three nations and was honored as the first Speaker of Parliament for five damn sessions. They okay. didn't throw their negotiator away when they came together as a nation. They threw nobody under the bus. Instead, they championed him. Oh. That is righteous. So how'd it go down? You see, of the three nations, Merrick was on top locally, and Merrick didn't like the idea of a union at all. Okay. Not at first. He thought it wouldn't work. Working with others seemed like a bad idea, in fact, considering the state of galactic affairs. But Humphreys wore him down, like a good friend does. And the only reason I bring this up is because what wore him down wasn't politics. It wasn't an appeal to power or glory 
or riches or conquest. It was a pussy? History books. What was it? It was in fact nerd shit. What? <laughs> See, Dentlev Merrick collected historic awards and trophies. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. If you go live and die by Merrick, shut the fuck up. <laughs> He's a f <laughs> My figurines! <laughs> Listen, okay. Painting figurines is lit. Having hobbies is lit. If you are willing to fucking sell out your country in negotiations for this shit, you are a piece of shit. <laughs> but hear me out, Alicia. Warhammers are expensive. <laughs> Have you played the tabletop? These <laughs> these miniatures are a bitch. I would sell up my entire country for a nickel. <laughs> okay, damn bitch. <laughs> All right, no, but for a second, just jumping back here for a second. Um, if you actually like look at the positioning of this place too, for like the Mer Commonwealth, like the positioning when it comes to trade relations is so fucking good. Like, you, the power dynamic you would have there is just insane. Just territory-wise, but, oh yes, whatever, go off, I guess, whatever. <laughs> ...collected miniatures, figurines mainly, and books and paintings and the like. And these two guys nerding out about their neat stuff they liked and had collected contributed as much toward the founding of the Free World's League as anything else. <laughs> Listen, if you give me, like, five Funko Pops... <laughs> Hey, like, let's see, a poster of Shao from Genshin Impact. <laughs> I give you my country. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, hear me out. <laughs> like, fuck off. Ostensibly, the Free World's League <laughs> is a federal republic. Yeah. With each province granted a grand measure of self-rule and sovereignty. And as you'd expect, the Free World's League is a complex creature, politically speaking. The parliament is technically a supreme federal and legislative authority, but there's some caveats to that. Mm -hmm. For one, membership of the parliament was, for a time, determined by the amount of taxes paid into the treasury. And then there's the self-rule problem. All that self-rule means you have all sorts of people in parliament. Some nations could be dictators. Just imagine you take your area and you're like, hey, listen, listen, listen to me now, listen to me now, homies, okay? You gonna give me 50% tax, I right? Half your income. But we get the most power in Parliament, and I hook y'all motherfuckers up, making the economy so that our par our goods and services actually cost a lot less. So the discrepancy between your wages and the discrepancy between items you purchase technically scale appropriately. But we will have the most voting power. <laughs> huh? <laughs> right? And then... You do a bubble economy, right? You do what Japan is currently doing right now. I don't know if you guys know what Japan does. Japan pumps fucking money into their economy. It's one of the most unstable economies you're ever going to see in your life. Actually, a good example of what uh, Japan's currently doing that what we did during COVID. During, during COVID, our governments were just like, here, just take this fuck of money, pump it into our economy, put us in an economic bubble, and don't worry about when that shit bursts. Don't worry about that. We won't talk about that. We're just going to get through this, <laughs> this let's get through this in pandemic. And then the economy, the economic bubble burst, all the, like, everything fucking crashed, right? But, if you keep doing it like Japan is, the economy never crashes. It just keeps getting fucked up. <laughs> That's what they're doing. That, that bubble one day is gonna pop for Japan, and they're gonna be fucked, at, like, economy-wise. But for now, they just keep pumping money in, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> might be 20 years from now, might be 10, might be 60, who knows? Yep's. Others a theocracy, others a democracy, and yet all under one flag. Naturally, this causes some, uh, problems. It's why, for the most part, the Free World's League, through its history, has operated in a near-permanent state of martial law under the Captain General, who is frequently, but not always, Americ. Historically, the power of the Parliament has waned with every major conflict, crisis, or state of emergency, whereas the power of the Captain General has increased. That's right. The Free World's League drops their issues at Merrick's welcome mat, rings the doorbell, and runs the fuck home. I don't envy that job. <laughs> 
Originally intended for military matters on behest of Parliament, eight centuries of emergency powers later, the Captain General stands as first among equals and is more or less House Merrick's personal lordship. You could say he's a Mogus. Of the Free World's League, with all of the hazards that entails. The Free World's League has defined its economic niche through innovative technologies and free trade, mm -hmm. which I feel is a response engineered in opposition to the then crumbling Terran Alliance's blanket of tariffs and protective customs laws. The laissez-faire approach to the Free World's economic principles has made more friends than enemies. However, poor risk management analysis has caused problems. Mm -hmm. For instance, after conquering the magistracy of Canopus during the reunification war, For a second, I thought this mofucka spoke in tongues. For like one second, I, <laughs> my brain said, Canopus, what? <laughs> he said, Magistracy of Canopus. I'm like, oh, he stopped speaking English. <laughs> what happened there? Where, where am I? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> no, I'm good now. I'm good now. I'm good. He just said, <laughs> Them titles are spitting for real, though. God damn. The Free World's League invested oceans of currency, industry, and effort into rebuilding the Canopan economy. Canopus returned the favor by outcompeting. Canopus, Canopan, <laughs> you open things. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I don't know why the word's so funny, but it is. <laughs> and underbidding the Free I'm World's a, League economy in the region <laughs> by mostly using principally cheaper labor and lots of industry they didn't have to pay to build. This resulted in a 10-year economic recession for the entire Free World's League. No good deed goes unpunished. Since, mm -hmm. they've learned quite a bit and have managed their economic affairs with care to guard against- Good! Learn about economic stability! Man, there's so many hoes who don't get economic stability! It's the systemic mayhem and shock is caused by Put me into these motherfucking governments, bitch! I, I'm gonna sit these motherfuckers down and be like, this is what's up, okay? You do not understand the limitations of your government. Y'all too busy dick riding yourselves, getting each other off, being like, <laughs> we are the government. <laughs> Our parliament is awesome. Like, shut up. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> that fucking neat. Wanted posters and figurines. That's how we ended up in this position. Shut up. <laughs> what you say is irrelevant. <laughs> By other states, good intentions or not. Culturally, the Free World's League is a mix. In fact, it is probably the most diverse state there is in the inner sphere. The principal language is mostly a derivative of Star League English, but on any given world, you might hear Czech, Arabic, or Urdu. That's With cool. the sheer number of cultures and political systems present in the Free World's League, it must be said that if there was anything that unified them, it was not America, but more an ideology. Hmm. And that's entrepreneurship, a belief in the free market, and the idea that anybody could make it if they tried. Oh, they're drop shippers. <laughs> Wait a second. They're those they're those dudes online who are like who put entrepreneur in their Instagram bios. <laughs> yeah, I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> I do drop shipping. <laughs> I got two Ferraris. <laughs> rented, but you don't need to know they're rented. <laughs> it was from the prosperity of the Star League that this philosophy grew, I feel. Yeah. The succession wars didn't dampen their spirits either. It merely made them appreciate what they had and encourage them to continue fighting for it. And maybe each other from time to time, because hey, glory to Merrick. Oh, what the hell? Next door is the one people make fun of, and for some of the right reasons. Welcome to the Lyran Commonwealth. First of all, few call it that unless they're declaring war or arranging marriage, which if oh. I'm frank might be the same thing in the same afternoon. What? So welcome to the house of Steiner. The Steiners are the ruling family and have been since virtually ever. Okay. They were founded as a merchant and industrialist conglomerate. They never stopped being exactly that. They celebrate their vast wealth by having far too many nobles, far too many noble titles, and historically largely incompetent generals. Save for the occasional flash in the pan, that is. <laughs> Sorry. Think, Brother Steiner, think! <laughs> Just family infighting, bro. <laughs> However, 
If they're strategically incompetent to the point that the concept of their scouting parties operating vastly excessive tonnage, even in modest probing actions, means based <clears throat> more on truth than you think, then how do they survive, you ask? Well, money and industry, friends. Money and industry. How Steiner's backing is the industrial base and every bank that invested in it. They are the military-industrial complex. There are many oh. good reasons they can afford to dump truck weapons into a situation, operational or not, piloted or not, and then continue to do so until the enemy leaves. While not <laughs> stupendously famous for warfighting leadership or tactical brilliance, how Steiner can and will bury you with its vast assembly lines led by... You know what, though? <laughs> They're the definition of throw money at the issue, and I kind of respect that. They're like, listen, we do not have the tactical brilliance to deal with shit. But we got the fucking money, bitch. <laughs> These golden guns are going to be firing. Sometimes they won't because no one's there to man it. No one's there to strategize. But hey, they're going to be there. You know, hopefully someone uses it. I don't know. <laughs> Pretend generals until you give up or they get bored. Every tragic comedy of their strategic planning is mostly covered by the sheer power of their pervasive economy and vast military industry. Nice. In its early days, the Lyran Commonwealth was headed by nine oh, other dicks. As that one has a penis on the right. Of Terra, because early post Terran colonies were like that, very uh, idyllic. Then one guy deposed the other eight, decided to establish the Estates General to run the show, and finally hammer out some agreements on what rights meant. Mm. And it's kind of worked out. Technically, the Archon of the Lyran Commonwealth is an absolute ruler, commander-in-chief of all military forces, and can unilaterally make most governmental decisions with a modest nod. Oh, that's they cool. They the show. They even hold the right to grant and remove noble titles in perpetuity. Titles which hold significant power. So they're a ruthless autocrat, right? Not really. Most Archons of House Steiner, aside from a few notable assholes, Not a nice lady. extensive covering and what I will likely label a historical diss track, are mostly okay people. They delegate most decisions to the bureaucracy. I'm gonna be real with you though. I'd be kind of be a rotten bitch. I'd be so petty one night. We have like a grand gala or something, and someone comes up to me. They a little bit, they a little bit too stank eyed towards me. I'd be like, "Oh, you can leave." They're like, "What? I have a right to be here. I'm this title." I'd be like, "Not anymore. Not anymore." Hand your honorary medals at the door, bitch. <laughs> you know, I would be that petty. Fuck the tactical factor. <laughs> See, the councils of state, <laughs> appointed advisors, and the estates general, and they typically just keep their heads down or just go to the Solaris thing. Right, the Solaris thing. So there's a bullseye in the inner sphere in the murder for entertainment business, mm -hmm. and it's right here Solaris 7. This is pretty much Steiner in a nutshell, but I'm not an expert in these matters, so I'll turn it over to a local. He can sum it up better. Mr. Fisher, take it away. Right. Solaris 7 is the only place where you can pay money to watch two strangers beat each other to death while also enjoying a corn dog. Duncan, that's not true. Canopus exists. They have corn dogs last I went. And a very good outback. Mm, I think Canopus banned trans fats, my dude. I've only ever seen funnel cake. Oh, and they do a lot of food on a stick. Saves napkins, less to clean up. Stick food is really the way of the future. I'm getting a fucking corn dog today. <laughs> this has motivated me. <laughs> I have nothing else to say to this. I haven't had a corn dog in years. <laughs> but fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna have one today. <laughs> I've decided. <laughs> it's messed up how they be talking about this. Food is more convenient on a stick. Fuck these guys, man. They're so right. But I... How could they do this to me? Because now I'm just gonna eat, I'm gonna binge eat corn dogs. <laughs> it's gonna be a problem. <laughs> I have this thing where I won't eat for like 20 hours or a day or sometimes even a day and a half. And then when I finally decide to eat, I just <laughs> and I stop eating again for a long time. I don't because I don't remember to eat half the time, right? My brain just doesn't remember it. And like, <laughs> so I'm like suddenly I'll feel hunger and I'm like, <gasps> where am I? <laughs> I think it's because I drink too much water, though. I genuinely drink way too much water to the point where I have to start limiting myself randomly. 
Because, like, I drink, like, two to three liters of water a day. And then at one point, I was peaking around four liters of water a day. And I'm like, girl, we got fucked up kidneys at this point. We'd be flushing out our toxins too well. This is a problem. Am I going to waterlog? It's probably was the way I wasn't eating, though. I wish we'd thought of it first. Sticks truly are the yardstick of food. I'm Duncan <laughs> Fisher. I stand by this statement. Sticks are the future. Mark my words. <laughs> Duncan, this is costing me a fortune. Oh, right. HPG pills. So, Solaris 7. Uh, murder is more or less very legal, so long as you do it in the box on TV. And as long as you have a stick involved. <laughs> Sorry. And everyone has a really great time. In fact, it's fantastic. There's explosions and music, and I'm there. Every night, on every screen. I tell you all the things I think you need to hear, and most of them are very accurate. Very, very accurate. Oh, that's... Anyways, <laughs> this is Duncan Fisher <laughs> signing off, and this appearance cost Professor Tex 1,485 sea bills. Thank you, Duncan. <laughs> um, as somebody who had to host shows before, I'm going to just tell you all right now, we do talk out of our asses a lot. <laughs> That's not a, even in current day when doing hosting positions. Like, I remember lying my fucking ass off. I'm not going to say which specific thing it was because I really don't want to get sued. But like to not breach my NDA, there was a game that I was talking about that I never played once in my goddamn life. But they gave me a script of, t of key points to mention while hosting. I freaking love the character, blah, 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 <laughs> And the worst part is, it was an anime game. And I didn't watch the anime, and I didn't play the game. So I had zero clue what I was talking about. And then I, after that, they, like, brought in different people. They brought in people from the development team of the game as I was hosting. They brought up cosplayers. And I was, like, right during, like, right before the next segment was being recorded, I was like, can you just tell me what you are? <laughs> I, just, I don't know who you are. They're like, you haven't seen this series? I'm like, listen, I watched most of the series. I don't know what this is, though. <laughs> I don't know what this is. What am I doing? <laughs> They're like, oh my god, Alicia, what the hell? Oh my god. <laughs> Did, okay, but to be fair, though, there was no requirement in my contract to to watch it or to play the game. So I didn't know. I thought it was like going there where it's like as somebody who doesn't know anything, you like go in and ask questions and do an interview-esque style. And it was like, no, you're not interviewing, you're hosting. I'm like, what? Oh my god, hosts are supposed to know what they're talking about. I thought it was an interview. <gasps> Oh my god! I just panicked the whole time, but it was cool. No one could really tell because I'm just a hyper person in general. But oh my god, I I was like, dude, I'm never gonna get hired again. I got hired like a million times over after that, thank god. But <laughs> the way I was cackling and laughing to myself when I got paid for that was crazy. I got my paycheck sent to me. And I was there laughing my ass off. Like, I can't believe I bullshitted for that many days of recording and still got paid. <laughs> it's so bad. But it's also, the one thing that's really dope, though, is if you give me any notes or anything like that to remember, I will remember it. That's the reason why it's really fun for me to do Warhammer content or SEP or this, even like this kind of stuff, is I will remember what you tell me. <laughs> so it will stick with me. But <laughs> it also makes me a little lazy. <laughs> Steiner space is a complex <laughs> thing. Not good, not evil, just very big. In fact, I think that the Lyran Commonwealth is much like a cosmic horror. Some giant, blind, idiot god. Just waiting there, happily making money in Strudel. Singing merrily to itself. Until someone comes over. And I think the, the dude writing the script was genuinely hungry during this part. Because we just talked about food on sticks. And now he's mentioning strudel. I think this is a him thing. <laughs> and so, someone hooked this motherfucker up with some food. What's, what's going on here? Which YouTuber is this? Hold on. What YouTuber is this? Hold on. Let's just find out real quick. What's his name? The Black Pants Legion. All right. Can someone buy him a corn dog and some schnitzel or strudel or something? I don't know. 
the table. <laughs> the is not eaten. And then it becomes very, very upset. <laughs> Oh, hell no. <laughs> it's crazy how he went from, like, kind of scaring me when he started grumbling in my ears to busting it down schnitzel style. You feel me? <laughs> or strudel style. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right, all right. Tighten up, tighten up. What's going on here? Anyways, moving to our right, because space has that, we have to talk about this strip of the inner sphere that's been nothing but hell. We're not talking about these a-holes here because oh. they're not from here, or rather, not recently. Okay. These are the clans, and for those uninitiated, they're a strange, deep space civilization of state-mandated eugenics program warrior cast combat cult weirdos, even by our state. Oh, so they're like, they're like Endeavor for My Hero Academia, but a whole group of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just eugenics the fuck out of their civilization, trying to be the bigger badasses. You feel me? That's... Am I wrong though? Jesus. Standards. <laughs> They're very weird. Yeah, they also that's got fair. Completely wrecked by the phone company. It was a pretty okay time for us, that is. So here's what remains of the somewhat free Russell hot republic oh so these guys were a thing briefly until these guys decided they shouldn't be because they were between these guys and terra which is controlled by the there was a mommy with abs and i was going to that cool with these guys taking a bite out of everything on their way to the telecoms hq for very odd strangely specific quasi spiritual reasons which were very different strangely specific quasi-spiritual reasons the phone company decided to murder them what? guys as it turns out you can make people show up to an ambush by just asking them remember be kind it pays dividends before that unpleasantness russell hogg was a y'all didn't eugenic some brain cells clearly what the fuck do they breed stupids with stupids <laughs> what happened <laughs> Are we fucking with me? State come from the space between House Curita over here and House Steiner. These Curitan buffer worlds were, before Curita came along, an independently free principality of mostly culturally Scandinavian colonists. This small state was then overrun by House Curita, who had to pry the worlds from them after 30 years of guerrilla mm -hmm. warfare. Mm -hmm. They didn't go quietly. They were always a somewhat fiercely independent border region who resisted assimilation into the Draconis Combine. Over time and some phone company intervention, Theodore Curita was convinced of the benefits of creating a buffer zone between the houses of Steiner and Curita by granting Russell Hogg independence. Some of Curita's guys were so mad at this that they resisted the government and Curita had to fight what was called the Ronin War. After old man Curita gave his rowdy warriors the belt, Russell Hogg became essentially a neutral buffer between the two superpowers, right. House Curita and House Steiner. They were independent for almost two decades before <laughs> these assholes came in, and in the end, they weren't anymore. This much of them survived as a rump state under the custodianship of Comstar until 3070, when Clan Ghostbear more or less took them in. Because Ghostbear is of a similar cultural background and understands the importance of family. Good people, mostly. Kind of clingy, though. For the record, Russell uh. Hogg was not a paper dragon. They collapsed only after fighting bravely in the face of overwhelming odds. They gave the clanners a hard fight on every world, and in the deep black between stars. Okay. It was a Russell Hogg pilot who kamikaze the Okan's warship and stopped the invasion for a year. Russell Hogg is like that. Only a year? He'll smile all day, but fuck around and the Viking comes out, and it doesn't stop until you or they are very very dead next up i have to talk about this this was once the cradle of humanity okay. but it's been a hotbed of a lot of historical issues originally the first circuit of what was called sl comnet was laid out in this chunk of space once called the hegemony then well there was this guy named jerome blake and as fate would have it he'd be the last employee of sl comnet but some assholes in time would think that everything that poured out of his goddamn mouth was the word of- I'm sorry, is anyone kind of creeped out by that friggin' loading bar in the bottom right? 
while he's talking and this is happening, the screen glitched after that loading bar played. Anyone else creeped out by that a little bit? But some assholes in time would think that everything that poured out of his goddamn mouth was the word of... Oh. Technical difficulties. Lower zoom in a redacted format. Praise Blake. Oh. Understandable. Right, so Never mind. It made sense now. The periphery, <laughs> then the deep periphery. Great. Goat, play me out. Team, show these people how we pay our bills. See you next time. Stay safe. Oh, far away from the light of terror, the remnants of another era. Join the crew. Grab a brew. It's a damn. Oh, wow. We're full of pirates, cultists, rednecks, and no Holy shit. <laughs> what? That, I didn't realize that was the end. That was incredible. Yeah, link to the original video in the description below, because holy shit, that deserves to be supported. That was like a whole... That was a whole ass experience. <laughs> holy hell. I I had so much fun during that. I was kind of nervous to tackle a video this long, because I was like, oh, it's a commitment to a video I have no idea about. But damn, was it a good time. Anyways, thanks for watching, YouTube. We'll catch you later, and uh, stick around for more nonsense and whatever I feel like doing, because this is my variety channel, and I do what I want. <laughs> All right, bye.